right, so I'm sound asleep in bed, and I, I just like bolt up out of bed, and it's like this burning sensation in my nose and throat, and I can't figure out what it is. So I, I reach for the, my glass, I get my glasses on, I click the light on, it, it hits me again, and my nose is just kind of burning. So I run to the window, I push the window open, um, I lean out, I get a big breath of fresh air, I turn back into the room, and it hits me in the eyes again. It's like this burning, I don't know what it is. Um, I get, I get MC awake, I get her up out of bed, I push her to the window and lean her out, not out the window, but just out, so she gets a breath of fresh air. Um, she gets a real strong breath of fresh air, and I, I'm like, I can't figure out what it is, so I run to the phone, I'm gonna get somebody here to find out what's going on. So, I should say we're in Paris, uh, on vacation. Uh, we've uh, taken the plane over to London, we've taken the train from London over to Paris, and since MC speaks pretty fluent French, I decided um, I'm gonna read from a French phrase book called Dirty French. It's got all kinds of great things in there, things like uh, how to insult the waiter and how to know if he's insulting you, those kind of things. Um, however, I only really concentrated on one phrase in the whole book, and it was um, a simple thing, and it was, uh, uh, Désolé d'avoir, she had only bidet. <laughs> Not really practical and useful when you're trying to get the front desk guy up to your room to find out what the crazy asphyxiating smell is. Well. MC finally convinced him to come up to the room, and he detects the smell and decides to take me on a tour of the hotel to see if I can find out what the source is. So we go down the staircase and around little corners, and we're like in the basement, tiny ceilings, and he's pushing me into little rooms, and I can't smell anything, and I'm sure I'm gonna turn a corner, and his accomplices are gonna clink me on the head, <laughs> take me away, that's gonna be the end of our European vacation. Um, he decides not to do that, fortunately, so um, he, he gets us another room in the hotel, and we go up we go back to my room to uh, clean it out, get all the stuff kind of put away, and he comes running in like five minutes later, bashing the door in like, le frigidaire, le frigidaire. It was the fridge, the tiny little fridge in the corner. So he and I pull the thing out from the wall, and unplug it, and it hits him in the face and about knocks him out. Um, so he decides we're not crazy Americans after all. It really was a smell. So perhaps the refrigerator wasn't exactly trying to kill us, all right? Um, but you ever wonder about those little things? They're, they're small, they're like on the other side of the room, they're under the counter, they don't say much, they don't make any noise. Those are the little guys. You ever wake up in the middle of the night thinking maybe they're looking at you? <laughs> a little worried about that? It's just a little fridge. Can't hurt you, right? Um, well, the reason they're so small and so quiet, they use them in hotel rooms and RVs and such, is because um, they don't use a compressor. A uh, big compressor uh, makes a lot of noise and it's not good for sleeping in hotel rooms. So um, instead of a compressor, they use a pretty complex series of like pipes and tubes and veins and all kinds of crazy stuff in there. And inside those pipes um, is this right here. It's a NH3, it's ammonia. It's compressed into a liquid at that point. It's a one nitrogen, three hydrogens. Um, ammonia is used for a lot of things besides killing me in my sleep. It's, uh, <laughs> it's used for um, fertilizer. It's used in smelling salts, which I'm glad for because that's what woke me up in the middle of the night. Got the window open. Um, it's used in cleaning solutions um, and these little dorm fridges. So um, it can be caustic or Agostic and, and toxic in high doses if you're like locked in your room um, or in closed spaces. So anyway, these systems have been around for a long time, these little dorm refrigerator ones. Um, I think they were invented in France. I don't know if that's a coincidence or not, but um, about 100 years ago, and they've been used um, for a lot of things because they're such a simple system. In fact, they're used in the space station. So about two months ago, um, the space station had a pretty catastrophic failure. It, uh, one of the AC units uh, blew a fuse or a gasket or something. And what happened was, it led to the th uh, three days of cons three consecutive days of spacewalks. Um, the one was the longest spacewalk without a space shuttle present. They're out there for like eight hours all day long. It was crazy. Um, at one point, the guy's on the outside of this uh, space shuttle. He's kind of hanging out there, like waiting, you know, fixing the AC. And uh, Houston's trying to convince him what to do. And um, they come up with, well, why don't you bang on it with a wrench? So he's out there, you know, banging on the thing with his wrench. Uh, eventually, pops it open and. He describes it as little snowflakes, like coming up into the, I'm like, well, yeah, that's the snowflake. The snowflake was the ammonia. And it's a good thing it was on the outside of the space station because you can't exactly, you know, crack a window in space to let the ammonia out. <laughs> so um, no matter where your travels take you, if you're going up to college, you're going to get a little dorm fridge, probably, right? Um, if you're going on vacation somewhere, maybe to Paris or someplace closer to town, you get a little a mini fridge with the $8 bag of peanuts. Or if you set your sights much higher, like say 200 miles up, you're going to space, you just want to make sure that the back of your fridge looks like this. That's the compressor, it makes a little noise, but it doesn't leak ammonia into the room. Um, if it doesn't look like this, you probably want to crack a window, just in case. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>